One of the most common questions that I get from patients is what do I do about being anxious all the time? It's like these little things, they just set me off and then I'm feeling like I'm shaking from the inside out. I'm feeling like I'm all amped up. Maybe I'm quick to snap and I have no idea why. Now, if this sounds like you, it's not uncommon for ladies to feel anxious while they're going through perimenopause or menopause. And maybe you've noticed around your period that you might get a little anxious as well. What this is, is a shift in hormones. That's what perimenopause is and menopause. We are transitioning with our hormones. They are going lower as we go into perimenopause and menopause. And with PMS, sometimes they're going high and dropping. So anxiety could be related to low levels of progesterone or high levels of inflammatory estrogen estrone or low levels of estradiol your most beneficial estrogen that helps you with laser sharp focus and keeping things chill now why would you see that relationship there well serotonin is something that we maintain in the body to keep us happy but if we don't have enough estrogen and estradiol in particular in the body we can't keep those levels of serotonin up so what happens well serotonin gets degraded into non-useful forms of the metabolite so what the heck what can we do well you can help to boost your estrogen levels naturally by taking hormone therapy so bioidentical hormones if you want to do that you can also do this by herbal therapy so black cohosh hops these are herbs that help to naturally boost your estrogen levels another way to do this would be helping to maintain your protein levels within your body because serotonin is a breakdown product of tryptophan so making sure you're getting in at least 100 grams of protein a day to help support you in this case now the more that you weigh the taller you are the more you might need some more protein in that factor and there are plenty of nutritionists out there and health coaches and functional medicine docs that can guide you to get that exact amount of protein that you need but i highly recommend assessing what you're doing right now and upping that a little bit now what might be the sweet spot you might notice if you increase your protein a little bit you're going to be more chill as time goes on, so check that out. The other part of this is helping your gut microbiome to be able to metabolize estrogen more effectively. My big recommendation is six cups of veggies a day and rotating the veggies that you eat. Why is that? Because most of us eat the same thing over and over again, and our gut gets used to that. And if the gut's already a little bit damaged, meaning we've got a little leaky gut situation going on, well, unfortunately, we might be having some trouble with those foods that we eat over and over again. The body might be becoming inflamed and having a little bit of a sensitivity reaction to that because the immune system is seeing the same foods over and over again. This is why rotation is key. So working on your protein, working on supporting your estrogen, whether you're doing bioidentical hormones, by all means, make sure you test before you do that and have someone who can guide you. But if you're not into doing bioidentical hormones, don't have to be, you can look at herbs that can support this. Red clover is another type of herb that can support your estrogen making capabilities. So what else can you do to help with anxiety? Well, there's quite a few different herbs out there that can help you to balance your moods as well. L-theanine is one of them. It's an amino acid that derives from green tea but it has the ability to regulate your neurochemicals and in particular cortisol. So cortisol is another factor that can be affecting your levels of anxiety. And cortisol goes up when the body senses a trigger or a threat, and then it can start to come back down after that trigger or threat has gone away and your body is basically convinced it is safe. Now, Cortisol is also regulated by ashwagandha, which is an Indian herb that has been shown to help to keep its levels in check. So 400 milligrams a day is kind of that baseline prescription, if you will, in terms of helping you to keep your cortisol levels in check for anxiety. Now, another set of herbs that I really love are herbs that help to calm the nervous system. Chamomile, passion flower, holy basil. These three are some of my most favorite herbs that I like to take on a daily basis in terms of little tinctures to help keep me nice and chill throughout the day. You can even find these in tea forms where you can sip on these types of tea throughout the day to help with your anxiety. But keep in mind that these are band-aids. They're not going to solve the problem. They're just there for in the moment break in case of emergency. L-theanine also in the moment break in case of emergency. Ashwagandha helps to control cortisol levels over time in which sometimes you can actually 
be done with it once those levels go down. So what do you do about this? How do you know what your problem is when it comes to anxiety? Well, my first and foremost, most favorite test is saliva testing for cortisol. This is where you spit in a tube and you spit before breakfast, before lunch, before dinner, before bed. You can look at your circadian rhythm to see what is going on when it comes to your anxiety. When are you peaking on cortisol or are you completely flatlined? So now we've got a stress and trauma type of thing going on. The other type of test that I look at is the Excella internal fitness testing. This looks at, are you producing a lot of metabolites that are related to your body being stuck in fight or flight mode all the time? But not only that, it's looking at your gut bugs. Are you not making metabolites that are showing you have sufficient beneficial bacteria? Or do you have excess where it's dysbiosis, so your gut health is not on point and you're not making estrogens, the estradiol in particular, the most beneficial estrogen to help you keep your anxiety in check. Now the other thing would be looking at serotonin levels and the Excel internal fitness testing can look at that as well to help you to determine, okay, do I have enough serotonin to keep myself chill and in a chill state versus this up and down going on and on with the hormones. Now, if you're currently still getting your period and you're having some period issues in addition to the anxiety, I do recommend dried urine testing. So the Dutch test is one or ZRT lab also has a dried urine test to look at hormone metabolism. This can be ideal to help you kind of put all the pieces together as to what is going on with your anxiety because there is a very strong connection to perimenopause and menopause and anxiety and it's related to your estrogen levels, it's related to your progesterone levels, it's related to your gut health, and can also be related to what's going on with your cortisol. Now you might be thinking, holy cow, that's a lot of things that could be out of whack. Yes, but getting to the root of this is going to help you to get that anxiety in check for good. Now, does it mean that you put all those things in check and you get to the root and we don't have to do any work upstairs? Absolutely not. Anxiety also has a very, very tight, tight, tight connection to stress and triggers. And so this is why I'm always talking to folks about making sure that you're on point when you're looking at your awareness. What sets you off? What situations, what environment sets you off for your anxiety? And then you can use the internal testing to kind of do a combo treatment here. One, you deal with what is out of balance, but you're also dealing with what triggers you. Because if you don't get rid of your triggers that are setting you off to have, have the anxiety, now we might have some trouble to balance things out over time. So I highly recommend taking a look at some testing to get to the bottom of your anxiety while working on observing you and your triggers that set you off. The more you know about yourself, the better you can become your own best doctor. I'm Dr. Janine Krause. Thanks for listening. And if you're looking for more information like this, head over to my website at drjkrausnd.com, where I have links to many of my free courses in addition to other resources.